Hello friends, after a long break, welcome back, and well, welcome back to me too. I know I've been away for a while, but I've been busy with stuff, you know. But now, I'm back here with you all. As you know, Game Guardian doesn't really work on most emulators or phones. It gets detected super quickly. So today, we're going to take a different approach and use Cheat Engine instead. Why are we using Cheat Engine? Because it accesses memory externally, which makes it harder for most games to detect. That's why we're doing this. We're going to test it out on a game today. Just a heads up. I'm not responsible for anything that happens. Everything is your own responsibility. This video is purely for educational purposes. Let's open up our game. And yep, the game is now running. First, I'll explain how to use Cheat Engine in a simple way. For those who are used to Game Guardian, I'll keep it basic, no pointers or anything like that. Now let's say we have some values we want to modify. Let's take a look here. For example, we could pick this value and try to change it. Let's say there's 28,000. What else can we do? Let's explore a bit. Oh, we have a gacha system, for instance. We can modify that too and see what happens. Step one, let's start with the static value. We'll modify it and increase it. Let's adjust this part. Let's keep it simple. First, open Cheat Engine. From the process list, what do we select? We pick LD9 box, selected. What's our current value? 15. Search for 15. We get 15,000 results. Let's spend some in the game. Now it's 30. Let's search for 30. Oops, I clicked wrong. I was supposed to hit next scan. No worries. Now 30 becomes 45. Then 45 becomes 60. We're down to 38 results. Let's spend one more. and now it's 75. So now we'll take all these 75 values. Use Control A to move them here. Let's gain a little something. Okay, we're done. Now how can we modify this? Here's how. Our current value is still 75. Let's spend one more to confirm. Delete the old values and move the real ones over. Now we're left with the actual values. When we set them to 99, we see that it really does become 99 in the game. Let's make it 100. If we push it further, what happens? It asks us to spend one item. Let's spend it. Actually, why don't we try cheating gems first? It'll make things easier. Let's say we want this value. We'll search for it. Since this is a static value, it's going to be a bit harder. First, close the targets. I'll reopen them. Why are we doing this? What was the value? It was 28,000. Finding it among all these might be tricky. The value is 28,000 again. Let's see, how many results? 297, no problem. Let's refine the search a bit by doing random actions. Okay, that's better. Now let's do one more thing in the game. All right, looks good. I selected these values. Why did I select them? You'll see in a moment. The game isn't running yet. So let's close and reopen it. The value is still 28,000. That's because it's from the memory of the player's previous state. It's not one of these values. Let's check again. Search for 28,000 again. Select these. Now I can lock in the real 28,000. Let's keep these handy. Let's explore the game a bit more. Navigate through our LDPs and other areas. Keep refining until we're down to 111 values. Click around a bit. I think we've narrowed it down enough. Select these, move them over. They'll show up in the lower section. 
pick an address from here, you'll notice similar addresses stack up. I select 28,000 again and run a search. This time, it returned 203 results. Now let's check the results directly. Has the game loaded? Yes, it's up and running. I'm reviewing the results again and returning to the shop. As you can see, the 28,000 value is still there. However, we need to pinpoint exactly where it is. I've filtered out some results and deleted the irrelevant ones. Now we're working with fewer data points. The fact that some values stay static makes this process a bit trickier. However, I keep cleaning up the suspicious sections. For example, if certain values change, I can remove those. Since the 28,000 value is static, I continue testing the remaining results. Eventually, I modified the 28,000 value, and if it didn't change, it means that data isn't the correct address. I delete the unnecessary ones again. Now we found the correct address. This is the address for the diamonds. With this, we can now modify the value to anything we want. For instance, we can set the diamond count to negative 9,999 or increase it to something huge like 1,200,000. Look, we've now adjusted the diamond count to the desired amount. This allows us to buy whatever items we want. In another example, Finding a dynamic value is much easier. For instance, I change the value from 75 to 105. Then I narrowed down the results to locate the correct address. After that, I modified it again to 300. Using the same method, you can make other changes too. That wraps up our process. I don't need to explain anything further since I believe you've got the hang of it. If you have any questions, Feel free to ask them in the comments. Take care.